born and raised in the LDS church. And I was, I was always taught that Joseph Smith never finished his translation of the Bible. He was murdered before that happened. And then I came across this book. Looks complete to me. He went through the whole thing. Psalms, Proverbs, I mean, cover to cover. Looks complete. What's the scoop? Was I lied to? Did they put a little spin on it? My whole life? Because it would make sense if he's a prophet of God. And he fixed the Bible, which he's quoted as saying he fixed it. And put back all of the plain and precious parts that were taken. So here we are at LDS.com, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So you have to cut through a couple hundred words of fluff just to get to what you want to see. Perhaps the principal reason why the church has not published or officially adopted the new translation is the prophet was unable to attend an authorized publication of it before its death. Of course, the records show that he wanted to publish it, and was in the process of preparing the manuscript at the time of his death, but was hindered by perse persecution and lack of finances. Okay. However, the manuscripts, Emma had it. Emma had his manuscripts and would not give them to the Quorum of Twelve. Why? Because they were acting on behalf of President Young, who called her a damned liar and like the most wicked woman on earth. So since they don't have the manuscript or the copyright, they're just uh, going to call it a day. I mean, all this drama between Emma and Brigham, does that make Joseph's translation any less valid? It seems to be increasing in use and acceptance in our church today. Okay, that's 1974. Is that still going on? The inspired version did not, did not supplant the King James Version. This dot 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 that's, that means we're hiding something, something you didn't need to see. Okay, so, Book of Mormon, DNC, and Pearl of Great Prife, when they offer information relative to biblical interpretation, these should be given preference in writing and teaching. But when these sources of Latter-day Revelation do not provide significant information which is available in the inspired version, then this version may be used. Is that King James or... I'm confused. Which version? Okay. Modern day revelation trumps the JST. The JST trumps the King James. But wait a minute. Why is it not the official version by, used by the church? Okay, I gotta sneak this in. Of course, the Bible has been transmitted through cent over centuries and suffered the loss of many plain and precious parts. And then the article of faith, of course. But the most reliable way to measure the accuracy of any big biblical translation, any biblical tra passage, is not by comparing different texts, but by comparison with the Book of Mormon and modern day revelations. Okay, back to this. The inspired version may be used, okay? So, number one, the Prophet Joseph Smith translation bears a much stronger testimony of the, of the divinity and mission of Jesus Christ than does the King James Version. Um, the divinity of Jesus Christ is absolutely stripped by Joseph Smith in John 1. It reveals much... It, it, it goes on and on about how great it is how how much superior it is it gives it why is it not the official bible of the church so the official church site saying it's totally superior to king james joseph's inspired version so here we are at wikipedia okay he thought it was sufficiently complete 
although he's got so much to do and so many things to change that it probably never would have been complete. So the RLDS, the Church of Community of Christ, and the LDS Church have gotten together. So the LDS can't say, oh, they removed plain and precious parts. I mean, painstaking effort. And their best scholars... So I've got this Old Testament student manual that might shed a little light on Joseph's interpretation of the Old Testament. And does he use the Joseph Smith translation? Hmm, okay. The creation. Yeah, he's got some... How old's the earth? Even when it is realized that chapter 1 of Genesis does not describe the beginning of all things. Or even the starting point of mankind. Even I got that out of the Bible. But they're saying it's not true. Let's see what other heresy they can come up with. So the church is going on record here as kind of an old earth. Believing in an old earth. Okay, There's only three theories according to them. The first one, the word day is understood to mean 24 hours. Okay, many scholars agree, very few people, either members of the church or members of other religion, hold to this theory. So, I guess popular vote, you know, how many people believe it, is how we're going to define theory. Oh yeah, they do that with doctrine, don't they? A lot. So what's the second theory? Oh, that Abraham was told through the Urim and Thummim, of course, that one revolution of Kolob, the star nearest to the throne of God took a thousand earth years. Okay. One day of the Lord's time equals a thousand years. And that's all based on the planet Kolob, of course. Which, which, wow. I don't even know what to say. You know what? I gotta hand it to him. This is actually the best argument that's not for an old earth, you know, it's, science seems to be falling apart now that there's soft tissue and dinosaur bones, but this is actually the best explanation I've heard. And apparently it's supported by the book of Abraham, so it's got to be true. Okay, I'm not going to get sidetracked with the creation argument, but at least we know where the LDS church stands. So much of the evidence seen by science as supporting a very old age for the earth is easily resolved. It would have lasted for millions, even hundreds of millions of our years. And uniformitarianism could be accepted without any problem. And see Henry B. Eyring, he's, he's an expert. Anyway, back to the Bible. So while the record indicates that God created the heavens and the earth, there is, of course, additional information. The prophet Joseph said, I shall comment on the very first Hebrew word in the Bible. I will make a comment on the very first sentence of the history of the creation of the Bible. Actually, he crossed it out and rewrote it. Barrow sheet. I want to analyze the word... It, I get frustrated with his self-proclaimed expert knowledge on the language, especially of Hebrew, Greek. Now remember, this is 1830s, 1840s at best. But here's what happened. The head god called together the gods and sat in grand council. To bring forth the world, the ground counselors sat at the head in yonder heavens and contemplated the creation of the worlds, which were created at the time. Here's the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. Great book. Um, <laughs> the Abraham account of the creation reflects the idea of the plurality of gods. And then it happened. 
So although it was the council of gods that supervised the creation, I don't know why that's capitalized, numerous scriptures indicate that Jehovah, the pre-mortal Jesus Christ, was actually given the responsibility for carrying out the work of the creation. Not for this earth alone, but for innumerable others. To Moses, God explained, In the world without number have I created, and also created them for mine own purpose, and the Son I created them. Jehovah or Christ had the assistance of Michael in creating the earth. Elder Bruce R. McConkie explained who Michael was. Our great prince, Michael, known in mortality as Adam. Wait a minute. But Brigham said Adam was God. Stand next to Christ, the eternal plan of salvation and progression. In the pre-existence, Michael was the most intelligent, powerful, and mighty spirit, son of God, who was destined to become, to come to this earth, accepting only the firstborn under whose direction and pursuant to whose counsel he worked. He is the father of hum the human family and presides over the spirits of all men. The name Michael apparently and with propri propriety means one who is like God. In the creation of the earth, Michael played a part second only to Christ. I thought God the Father. Wait a minute. Are they trying to confuse me? But, but check this out. Joseph Smith, of course, helped in the creation. And why not? It is true. This is what Joseph Fielding Smith taught. It is true that Adam helped to form the earth. He labored with our Savior Jesus Christ. I have, long, I have a strong view or conviction that there were others also who assisted them. Perhaps Noah and Enoch. And why not Joseph Smith? And those who were appointed to be rulers over the earth formed. Why not? You know, this this is the doctrines of salvation, of course, that was stripped from Scripture because of stuff like this. Okay, man is in the exact image of his maker, acknowledges that there's a mother in heaven. But wait, it is not feasible to believe that female spirits were created in the image of a mother in heaven. Are they trying to confuse me again? Of course, Adam held the priesthood and obtained the first presidency and held the keys of it for, from generation to generation. So he got the priesthood and the keys in the creation before the world, world was formed. Oh, let's check this out. Let's go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So following our selected portions of Joseph Smith translation. You mean there's more? They're holding something out on us? The Lord inspired the prophet Joseph Smith to restore the truths the King James Bible text had become lost or changed since the original words were written. These restored truths clarified doctrine and improved scriptural understanding because the Lord revealed to Joseph certain truths that were original that the original authors had once recorded. The JST is unlike any other Bible translation in the world. Boy, that's a fact. That's an honest thing on this page. In this sense, the world translation is used in a broader and more different way than usual. For Joseph's translation was more revelation than literal translation from one language into another. So, if the Bible was corrupted and messed with, it would have to be right around the time of the alleged apostasy, correct? Beginning of the New Testament. So, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found predating Christ, and they matched exactly with the Isaiah text and Genesis, how is this? So although it's not the official Bible of the church, it offers many interesting insights. You know, it's a great little aid. Well, 
on one hand, they trashed the King James Version. It's just had up. It's so corrupt. Had all these things removed. And the Joseph Smith translation, of course, straight from God to a prophet of God, which is, why is it not the official Bible? I was told, growing up in Provo, Utah, that it was because he never finished it because a mob murdered him. Which, you know what? He was murdered. But this was done. There are many accounts in the Times and Seasons. Sidney Rigdon said it was complete. Joseph said it was complete. And they published these accounts in the Times and Seasons. So the inspired version, he became aware of the need for it in 1829. Because the Bible, Nevi, in the Book of Mormon, many parts, which are plain and most precious, have been taken away. The work began in 1830 and was completed on July 2nd, 1833. I'm getting so sidetracked. Okay, Genesis. I am the beginning and the end, the Almighty God. My, by mine only begotten I created these things. Yea, in the beginning I created the heaven and the earth, Upon which thou standest. And the earth was of form, and it caused. Uh, there is just too much. It's overwhelming. I need to make a whole another video just on this. So, back to my original point. I was told growing up. We didn't use this Bible because it wasn't finished when he was murdered. Apparently it was finished and we were just in a spat with an offshoot of the, they were more fundamental of the church, but 10,000 people followed Jane Strange um, and Brigham Young came to power. How did God reveal it? No, he won a vote in 1844. Nowhere in the Bible or the Book of Mormon does God choose his leaders by letting the people vote? That's Brigham Young's authority. 